So with the recent release of the Canon G7X Mark III, a lot of people have been wondering, how does it compare to the classic and one of the best vlogging cameras of all time, G7X Mark II? Well, in this video, we're gonna be covering the good, the bad, and the ugly coming up. You gotta just press record. What's up, Sean here with Think Media, and let's dive into the comparison of the G7X Mark III versus the Mark II. Now, if you've been paying attention, you probably know that this G7X Mark III is not without controversy. It came out a lot of great features, but then you ran into some overheating issues, some questionable autofocus performance, and even with the firmware update, I can say that that's not fully corrected. However, this camera is not without purpose and not without a lot of really cool features and benefits, so let's just break down the comparison right now. So let's kick it off with price. The G7X Mark III hit the market with a $750 price tag here in the US, with the Mark II holding strong at $650, although you can definitely find a lot of good used deals and refurbished deals that are much cheaper. And before we get into any differences, let's start off with the similarities. First, they both have flip up to selfie touch screens, which are super convenient and easy to use and ideal for vlogging. Second, one of my favorite features is the built-in ND filters. This allows you to almost have sunglasses for your lens and when you're in bright situations, maintain that cool depth of field look when taking photos or videos. Another commonality and strength of both of these cameras is the image stabilization. One of the reasons why these are a favorite among vloggers is because you have optical image stabilization, meaning it's built into the lens, as well as digital image stabilization, which is done by the processor. These two things work together very well without too much warp stabilizer effect, and so definitely a strength of both. The cameras also have incredible lenses, starting at 24 millimeters, making them solid for vlogging. Not super wide, it'd be nice if it was a little bit wider, but definitely wide enough to vlog, as well as the ability to zoom all the way into 100 millimeters, and a starting aperture of 1.8, which again, gives you that nice blurry background, very strong for low light performance, and only 2.8 as far as the lowest max aperture for when you're at 100 millimeters. Again, giving you a great opportunity for portrait style photos and incredible video. The lens on both cameras is solid. Now, both of these cameras also shoot great HD video. The Mark II at 24, 30, and 60 frames a second if you wanna do some slow motion or have more movement detail. And the Mark III had a little criticism for withholding 24 frames a second, however, Canon has announced that a firmware update is coming that will add 24 back. So when it comes to HD video, these cameras are pretty on par. However, when it comes to autofocus, it's something that we're gonna need to talk about. So let's head into the other room and get into it. So the autofocus on the G7X Mark III has not been without controversy. When the camera first came out, it actually received a lot of negative reviews, terrible low star ratings on Canon and on Amazon, people writing in forums about how slow the autofocus was and how much it would just hunt and not nail focus. So then after a few months, Canon released a firmware update, giving you the option to leave it in its original mode or add a new mode, which was faster and more accurate. And while there was a noticeable improvement into some of the nuances of the autofocus, it still hasn't been fixed entirely. The main issue being that while it can find focus and lock on, it kind of has a hunting and general loss of focus. And at times, it sometimes just loses it completely and still wanders off even with the new firmware update. So when it comes to comparing these two cameras, we then have to look at the Mark II, which is actually known for having pretty great autofocus. The fact is, both of these cameras are contrast-based, so they're nowhere near as good as like the Canon M50's dual pixel autofocus or the phase detection autofocus of Sony cameras that is so popular right now. But nevertheless, the Mark II has been a super solid and dependable camera, especially for vlogging and being user-friendly. In fact, my friends Benji and Judy have been daily vlogging on It's Judy's Life for years now, and they've been using the G7X Mark II, and while it's not perfect, it still hunts at times a little as well, 
Overall, it does a great job of maintaining focus on human faces and doing face tracking. That's probably the weakness of the G7X Mark III is that it really loses on people's faces. That even though you can see that it knows where the face is and you can see that it even is tracking the face, it still hunts. Whereas the autofocus on the Mark III doesn't do a bad job when it comes to landscape, when it comes to actually turning the camera around and focusing on buildings and whatnot. When I was in Guadalajara, I got a lot of footage and it did a great job of staying in focus in those situations. But it is the important vlogging scenario that we actually need this camera to perform as far as video goes. And unfortunately, it just isn't that great. I would like to note that in photography and in photo mode, the focus is amazing and it can nail focus and take burst photos and we'll talk about that a little bit later. But something that you need to know is that the autofocus between these two cameras has to go to the Mark II with the superior autofocus and therefore actually more superior for daily vlogging in a case-by-case -case basis if you were to ask me. However, at the end of this video, I'm going to be sharing a few autofocus hacks for the Mark III. So if you still want to take advantage of all of these features, stick around because they're really cool and they are some great workarounds. With all that said, the Mark III still has some new features that we definitely need to talk about and is still a very powerful camera, especially with some autofocus workarounds. So let's get into the new features of the Mark III. The first is the inclusion of a microphone input. Now, along with the Sony RX107, those are the only only two point and shoot cameras on the market right now that I know of that actually have the ability to hook up an external mic. This is an amazing feature and the audio is incredible. Not only is the on-camera mic great, but now you can use a lavalier mic or a shotgun mic and take your audio to the next level, not just for vlogging, but more so for sit down YouTube style videos. The Mark III also comes in weighing 14 grams less than the Mark II. They are still very similar and it's almost unnoticeable, but they did find a way to make this camera a little more efficient even with the new features which is pretty cool. Also the Mark III now has a new sensor. It's a 20.1 CMOS stacked sensor that's actually the Sony sensor I believe from the RX103. That means that the image quality coming out of this camera when it's in focus is superior to the Mark II and you can tell it's a very rich uh, image in 1080. You've got great color and overall it also performs better in photography. You can push the shadows mo more when taking photos. It's an amazing sensor and the overall picture quality that comes out of the camera is something that is stellar. Plus they've also upgraded the processor. It's now the Digic 8 processor which means that the camera is blazing fast. I think that processor is also how they support slow motion in 4K but all of the menu operation is super fast. The fact that you can take multiple photos and they buffer and the camera recovers quickly. The camera turns on and off fast. The faster processor is very noticeable in the overall camera experience, which also brings us to photography. I think that when these cameras go head to head, the clear winner in photography is the Mark III. I don't see any autofocus issues when it comes to shooting photos. Recently, my wife and I went out to shoot our Christmas cards with this camera and we were pumped with the results. It was just her and I in a tripod, using a timer, using the app, and using control to just fire off the camera remote. And it is absolutely incredible. Burst mode supports like 20 frames a second in RAW. There's a way to do like 30 frames a second if you do kind of some kind of a combo mode. You know, compare that to eight frames a second in the Mark II, and you can see that this is the clear winner when it comes to photography. So I would say, if you want to walk around point and shoot camera and photos were your priority, then the Mark III absolutely knocks it out of the park. Now when it comes to HD video, these cameras are pretty much on par. Again, frame rates on the Mark II are 24, 30, and 60, and Canon has said they're going to be adding 24 back to the Mark III, so you'll still get 24, 30, and 60 on the Mark III. You've got the better image quality because of the new sensor, however that autofocus performance is frustrating. But what's new here with the Mark III is 4K video and slow motion. You're able to shoot up to 10 minute clips in 4K, no crop on that image, and it is amazing that when you're shooting 4K and you nail focus and you lock it all in, the shots are pretty much to die for and it's crazy that they're coming out of a point and shoot camera at this price point. However, 
it does have overheating issues. And we've noticed that whether you're shooting in hotter temperatures or even if you're shooting in AC, at times I've ran it all the way up to 10 minutes when shooting in an air conditioned environment, but there's other times where it also overheats. And the same is true for slow motion. You can do 120 frames per second slow motion in the Mark III, which does not have audio or autofocus, and the clip is slowed down once you shoot it. But all you have to do is just lock focus by half holding the shutter, then hit record on slow motion and make sure you stay at a consistent focal distance and you can get some very incredible slow motion shots. I love them, they look amazing, but that also causes the camera to overheat. So the big issue with the 4K and the slow motion is mainly that it's not dependable. They're incredible features if they would work consistently and you could still complete a full 4K vlog and still definitely use 4K clips throughout the day or slow motion clips throughout the day. However, you may have to stop and wait, let the camera cool down. In fact, the camera doesn't even feel very hot. So I almost wonder if they just set the internal temperature to shut down before it got to like a dangerous amount of heat because it doesn't even feel crazy. But all that to say, I love those features. It's just a bummer that you you can't rely on the 4K or the slow motion. Another cool feature of the Mark III is USB-C charging. Now this is kind of the future of cameras. However, a lot of your cables or older wall plugs may not deliver the power that this needs. You actually are suggested to buy a power cable from Canon that cost $190 to be able to actually run continuous power to the camera. Now, if you want to work around for that, you could use your MacBook Pro charger or just grab a $30 MacBook Pro charger like this off of Amazon, and I'll link to this one in the description below if you want to check it out. It works great. You could plug it into the USB-C uh, plug and you have continuous charging on the camera as well as the ability to even kick the battery out entirely and run the camera just off of that power cable. This is amazing for longer YouTube shoots um, and it really is, I believe, the future of cameras as far as a way to charge and have continuous power. A very cool feature that I hope goes in every camera to come from every brand. Now two other new features of the Mark III is one, YouTube live streaming from internal on the camera. I haven't heard great things about this, I haven't tried this, and my friends over at Live Streaming Pros did and they weren't impressed, so I would probably skip past that. And then finally, the ability to shoot vertical video and have the camera recognize that those are vertical video files. Meaning that if you wanted to shoot some vertical stuff and then actually use the app and the smartphone feature to capture that footage to maybe edit an IGTV video or some Instagram stories content on your smartphone, you could do that right out of camera. Now, of course, you could do this on the Mark II as well by just turning the camera vertical. However, those files are gonna probably need to be flipped in your editing software. So this just kind of shows you that the G7X Mark III is thinking more towards the future of not just horizontal video, but also vertical. So if you are committed to getting the Canon G7X Mark III, I wanna share that autofocus hack with you in just a second. But if you've been getting value out of this video, can you smash the like button? And I wanna pass the question off to you. What do you think about the G7X Mark III? Let me know in the comment section below. And if you actually wanna check out some of our top camera recommendations, when it comes to this price point here at Think Media, we would definitely recommend the Canon M50 as one of our favorite cameras. Sure, it's a little bit larger than this, but the fact that you can pick it up for around $550 off Canon site refurbished, that is an incredible value. So if you wanna check any of that stuff out, we'll link to some of our favorite cameras and videos in the description below. And again, the Canon G7X Mark III is quite a powerhouse, and there is a way to actually at least help with the autofocus issues, and that's by using AFL autofocus lock. So here's how you do it. So the way to get around the Hunty autofocus is essentially to use manual focus or turn the autofocus off once you lock down a shot. And so we'll, there's two ways to do this. One of my favorite ones is to go into the menu, turn on manual focus peaking settings, make sure that it's on, you can turn it to high, and you can experiment with different colors, red, yellow, or blue. And what this does is it actually will put little red on your eyes or blue or yellow on your hat or whatever in shot is in focus when it's in manual. So you can actually know on a smaller screen like this if the shot's in focus or not. Then step two is simply to put the shot into vlog mode, lock it on your face, and you actually, if you half press the shutter, you can reach around, press the side uh, 
the right button on the wheel and it puts it in a manual focus. Now I can actually see that my face is tack sharp with the red manual focus peaking settings and I know that I could walk with my arm at this distance and stay in focus the whole time. If I wanted to tap back into it, I just reach around, tap back to just normal autofocus, and then maybe I can go back to hunting for focus as I would want to. One other way to do this is to actually just reach up, hit the shutter button, make sure your face is in focus, tap the servo AF button, which if you get kind of good with it, you can use the back of your pointer finger to do that. And it does the same without the little red, yellow, or blue lines to make sure you're in focus. Kind of a hack that you'll have to get used to, but definitely a way to guarantee if you want to narrate a vlog while walking down the street or something to stay in focus the whole time. Remember that when you get the behind the camera, it actually does pretty good on landscape and whatnot. And so something you can grow into if this is a camera that you want to invest in or that you already have and you want to max maximize the features. So as far as my final thoughts go, if your primary purpose is photography, I actually think that the G7X Mark III is a killer camera. However, if you want a dependable, easy to use vlogging camera, I think that the G7X Mark II is still the better buy. Sure, you're basically not going to have that mic input, but for vlogging and just putting the camera in your pocket, you probably don't want to rig this up with a major mic anyways. Vloggers around the world trust this camera, and now the fact that you can grab it on Amazon Renewed or the Canon Refurbished site for maybe around $500 or even cheaper used, I think that the Mark II to this day is still a great camera to invest in. And we actually have a tips video about it that I'll link up on the YouTube card and put it in the description below of how to get amazing footage with it. And then finally, if you really want a 4K vlogging camera, I think that the RX100 5 is a good camera to look at. It's around $850. It does have a built-in ND filter. It does have the 1.8 lens. It doesn't have the mic input like the new, much more expensive 7 version, but if you're looking for something that can do 4K and not overheat, definitely check out that Sony. And if you want to learn about any of the other cameras that we recommend here at Think Media, we'll put all of those links in the description below. Smash like if you got value out of this video, and we'll see you in the next one. Peace. Yeah.